Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey people, today we're going to take a look at Mi Tierra from Aldebaran Games, a Chilean company, actually, which means that this game has been quite hard to get for quite a while because of that reason. And actually, I want to stress here that this is the original version of Mi Tierra that we're going to be reviewing here. I don't know if it's exactly the first edition, but definitely one of the uh, the first print runs of the game. Uh, and I say that because up on Kickstarter right now, there is a uh, project uh, from Aldebaran for a new version of the game. I don't know if it's a rebooted version or just a redone version with new stuff, but it's called Mi Tierra, uh, The New Era. And um, so this has nothing to do with, with, well, I mean, it's the same game, but they have, are rebooting it. But that is to say, this is not a preview. This is a review. I have no contact with the company regarding this. I just had, actually had this game for a couple of years now and just finally decided, well, now would be the time to finally review it, if at all. Um, although I should point out, just lest you think I'm giving it away, this was in Board Gaming Purgatory. So I only just recently played it finally. And so now I'm ready to do the review. Um, but this is a game about ra uh, having a farm and being as productive as possible. You're trying to get money for your farm. You're trying to raise livestock, get crops, all these different things. Does that sound familiar? Well, it's like a lot of Euro games, including one of the most famous Euro games, Agricola. But this one can definitely be called a family weight version of those bigger um, Euro economic resource games about, you know, feeding uh, your family and getting different crops and things like that. So let me go ahead and give you a uh, brief look at the game. Then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Mi Tierra is a competitive worker placement game for two to four players. Players are farmers, trying to be more productive than their rivals. The goal is to have the highest income by the end of the game. The game ends when all three permanent events have been drawn from the market deck. We'll get to that later. As a side note at the start, be advised that the board I'm about to show you has several extra pieces of artwork and player spaces that are not actually used in the base game, but rather these were preemptive planning for unreleased expansions, so we're not going to talk about them at length. Each player takes three workers of their color and may get more later. A cube of your color is used to track turn order, which is random in the first round. Players start off at different income depending on who has first player advantage. Each player gets a personal farm board with spots for developments, a built-in apple crop, and a built-in livestock barn with three spaces. You'll get more crops and barns later. Within reach of the players will be various resource cards in one and three denominations. There are also the three types of crops, apples, grain, and grapes. There are two six-sided dice in the game, the green boot die and the white spider die. These will be rolled to determine resources at times. The boot die has four one faces and two two faces. The spider die has three ones, two twos, and a three. The easiest way to explain Mi Tierra is by going through the phases of each round. In phase one, turn order is determined for the round. Whoever was lowest on the income track gets to go first, then next lowest, and so on. Phase two is maintenance. First, for your workers. During the game, you might get up to two more workers. If you do, you must pay $2 for each one that you have above three by moving back on the income track. You do this every round. You can't go below $0, so if you can't pay for a worker, it must go back to the stock on the board, which we'll cover in a moment. The second part of maintenance is the market. At the start of the game, spots are filled based on the number of players. In future rounds, empty spots will be filled. Some cards that linger will have arrows on the bottom, and these will migrate down to the bottom of the board during this phase. They will be removed from the game during the next market phase, so you have fair warning. Most market cards simply allow you to sell various goods for income. Each one has a limit of how many of each item you can sell, and how much you get for each one. Some markets only buy a set of disparate goods. After going through the A deck of market cards, you start the B deck, which has rarer and more expensive goods represented. In the A deck, you might come across events. When one is drawn, it immediately takes effect and is discarded. These events do nasty things, like making all players lose half of their resources or livestock. In the B deck, there are only three events, and they're each permanent, like inflation, which causes the price of certain goods to rise. Permanent events stay out until a new one replaces it. More importantly, when the third permanent event is drawn, nothing happens, it just gets immediately discarded, 
but the end game is triggered. The game will end at the end of that current round. Now back to the phases. Phase 3 is worker placement. In turn order, each player places a worker pawn on one of the empty spaces on the board. If all the spaces at a location are taken, you can't go there this round. But if there are empty spaces when your turn comes back around, you could even place a second or third worker in the same spot. Workers who go to market are placed in order of their arrival. You may also place workers on your fields to provide crop yields. In phase 4, you actually activate those workers that you placed before, in a certain order. Production areas first, which is the main spots on the board, from left to right, top to bottom of each section, then your personal farm board, then the market and the black market. I'll run through each space quickly. In the forest area, one worker will let you roll the green die. On a one, you take a barn with two spaces and place it on your farm, covering up crop spots. On a three, you get a three space barn instead, which is just the other side of the two space barn. You can also place two workers here to guarantee a three space barn. On the very rare spots that allow you to place two workers at the same time, you simply put them next to each other so that the other spaces are still empty. The sheepyard lets you roll the white spider die for sheep, either getting one, two, or three. These immediately go to your barns. Only one type of animal is allowed per barn, and any animals you get that you can't put anywhere become meat automatically. The square of workers lets you take one of your workers to use next round, but remember, you will have to pay for them later. The crops area lets you get seeds for your fields. Roll the spider die to determine whether you get apples, grains, or grapes. Then put it in your fields on an open spot. The cow yard and hen house function just like the sheep yard, letting you get each type of animal by rolling one of the two dice. The animal products factory lets you make wool, milk, and eggs depending on how many of each animal you have. One $5 charge lets you get all three items once. Animals stay in your farm, you just have to have them. The clock tower lets you look at the top four cards of the market deck. If you are the only one here when it gets to this phase, you can actually rearrange the order as well. The bakery lets you produce one cake for $8, one milk, and two eggs. Cakes are worth a lot at the end of the game, $49 when you trade them in. The development area has four random developments set up in a rectangle. These developments can go on your farm board and give you a constant ability, like getting money each round, producing extra livestock in your own barns, and or converting goods into better goods. As developments are taken, they'll be replaced from the main deck. Each worker placed here goes on the border between two cards, or you can be the one player who stands in the center. Therefore, there are actually five open spaces on this area. When you activate here, you take one card that you're touching and pay income equal to how many you were touching. The more cards you touch, the more options you have, but the more expensive it could be. The flour and wine factory lets you convert grain and rices into milk and wine for $5. And finally, the cloth factory lets you spend three wool and seven coins to take a clothing resource, which is worth almost as much as the cake resource at the end of the game at $47. You may also tend to crops with your workers. Workers placed on your fields gets you one resource of the appropriate type. If more than one crop is next to an identical crop and a worker is placed on one, you get one extra resource of that type. The market is resolved last. In order of placed workers, each player can activate one of the market cards and sell goods at the depicted rate. Afterward, the card is discarded and immediately replaced. If an event is drawn, it is resolved right away. If a player doesn't want to sell at market, they don't have to, but their worker is removed from the track. The remaining workers may be activated over and over, selling each time in order. Alternatively, a player may decline to sell and go to the black market. After the entire regular market is resolved, players at the black market can now buy and sell goods as depicted on the space on the board. The sale prices are less than market cards, and not every good is available for sale, but if the right cards didn't come up at market, this might be your best alternative if you're desperate for cash. The game continues like this round after round until the third permanent event is drawn as described earlier. Players sell their cakes and clothing and trade in resources and livestock combined for $1 per set of three. Whoever has the highest income at this point is the winner of the game. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. 
Lest I keep you in suspense, I will tell you that overall, I like Mi Tierra. I don't think I love it, but I think that it's a solid game. It is definitely an... I would say it's a gateway style game into those bigger games like Agricola, but in and of itself, even apart from that, it is good in the sense that it is uh, faster playing, easier to get into, you can play it with more casual people, and I think that even for uh, myself and a few of the other people that I've played with who were definitely jaded hardcore gamers, we still appreciated it for what it is. But let me go ahead and tell you the bad things first. There are a couple of notable things that really frustrated us about this game that don't hurt the game overall, but are worth mentioning if you were to ever come across this first edition of the game, which granted is kind of hard to get. Um, but this will, maybe hopefully these things will not carry over to the new version of the game, at least that's my hope. First and foremost, the rulebook is horrendously awful on a scale I haven't seen in quite a while. It is so bad. Things are not clear at all. First off, it's done because this is originally a uh, Chilean game, they made the language dual language, which is fine. But <laughs> the way that they did that, rather than have extra pages in the book, they decided to save money by having the, uh, the English text and the Spanish text right next to each other on each page. So it's two concurrent lines of text. Pretty annoying. And maybe because they were trying to save so much space in that way, a lot of important information is left out that you just have to assume. Like what you know, what uh, pawns and what cubes mean and what they represent. Um, in the rule book, there are pictures of the workers, but they look like cubes. And you're like, wait a minute, there are no cubes of that color. You didn't know that you were going to use the big pawns, did you? And that's what they actually are. And that's just an example. There's other things that just aren't clear, like how the market works, that we just kind of had to guess as time went on, to the point where the first game of this, while we had a pretty good grasp of it, there was we definitely had to play it again because it was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> We're not even entirely sure some of these things just kind of worked out. We're just guessing at this point. And then it became more clear. So really, hopefully, they do a better job with the new rulebook on the new version. Um, some of the mechanisms and how things work in the game are not necessarily that intuitive. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, it, it, this goes to the theme as well, which I think is overall fine. Um, it's a farming game, and you kind of get that sense. But things like you're saving up to get the cloth and the cake. And they're, not only is that weird that those are like the end-all, be-all apex of what you're trying to accomplish. I guess they are representative of your farmer community as a whole, but that they are these uh, sort of... Uh, odd numbers, $47 and $49. So that's kind of a, a weird thing. And there's those kind of weird inconsistencies throughout the game and how things work um, that kind of feels like, gives it the general sense of, oh, we need to have this mechanism. Let's just kind of shoehorn it in in a way that kind of makes sense. <laughs> but again, this might also be the, the translation and things not coming across as well as they should have. But overall, those um, in the face of the the, the broader scope of the game aren't as big of a deal because this is a pretty fun game. Um, the, the things that I like, it, it, it's this is not the it's a worker placement game, but it's not a vicious worker placement game. There's games that are worker placement where you are how many times can I say worker placement in the same paragraph? Uh, where you're you can really cut someone off from getting what they need. You can actively look at what they're doing and perhaps choose a choice that for you is somewhat suboptimal, but really hampers your opponent, really screws them over. This isn't that kind of game, and it's not meant to be. I mean, this is a, like I said, this is a family weight entry gateway style game, and that really comes across. But even despite that, in other games that might be a false, like, oh, well, there's no tension. It's still interesting because you have different options and different choices. Are, is someone building up to get the cakes? Is someone building up to get the clothing? Is someone building up to just sell, 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 sell as much as possible? Get like this, just the, this whole resource management thing, crop after crop after crop, get as many resources as possible, have a huge sale at the market. Is that their strategy? There's not a ton of strategy in this game, but there's enough that keeps it interesting. And because of that, the lack of any kind of fierce competition over worker placement spaces um, isn't as big a deal. And that will come up in some regards. Sometimes you just, it, you know, you have a certain amount of workers, which are pretty easy to get in this game. You'll have five workers, you should, by the second or third turn. Uh, but sometimes it's just like, oh, everyone wants chickens now. Well, what are you going to do? But I think there's enough other choices for you to do that it doesn't feel as restrictive. Same thing with the market. The market could have been 
extremely restrictive if they really wanted it to be. Like, you go there, you make one sale, you're out. Instead, you can stay there as long as you want, as long as you have things to sell and or market cards that are for the things that you want to sell. And even then, you could go to the black market. If you really need to get some cash, if you really just want to dump some stuff and, or get some items in order to get the cake, for example, um, or the clothing, although you can't really do that with the black market, but regardless, um, you can do those things. And so again, it's not that restrictive, but it's a suboptimal thing. So it's still, it, the game still rewards you for doing things well, for planning things out ahead of time, for having a strategy and sticking to it. Um, I like the graphic design and the artwork of the game. I'm not a fan of the fact that they, as I mentioned in my overview, that they stuck all of this expansion content on the board that you can't actually use. That was just them trying to cheap out again, which <laughs> I guess those expansions never came about, but maybe they will with the new era. But I don't think there's going to be any compatibility between these things, so don't get your hopes up if you have this edition. Uh, so I wish that there was something I could do with that stadium, the competition that seemed really interesting, but it never quite came about. But otherwise, I like the little chibi characters and the artwork. It, it's pretty cool. Kind of reminiscent of Imperial Settlers almost uh, in that regard. So maybe that's the kind of feeling that I was getting in the back of my mind. Um, all the different types of spots are very interesting. I think this is a game that definitely, if you were going to hold on to it, you'd, you might want to pimp it out a bit because of the, uh, the cubes used for the different types of animals. But still, they work okay. Actually, in my overview, I was missing some of the orange components, which is a little bit frustrating, which is why I didn't use them. Uh, but overall, I like the presentation. And it's just a fun game. It's a solid game. It's not going to set the world on fire. Maybe the new version will. I don't know. But I think that this made me more interested in getting a new version to see what they changed, to see what they added, to see if they did make enough uh, new stuff to make it a great game. Because as it is right now, it's just a good game. I would definitely recommend it for people who have younger gamers, more casual gamers, who they're trying to ease into the uh, the genre of Euro games as a whole, but maybe worker placement in uh, particular. Um, so I think it did a very good job there. And it's it. I never really really was into economic resource management games all that much, but this one just flows so smoothly. You get the items here, you you build them here, or you you take them here. You get the market cards, you trade them in, you swap. It all goes pretty easily. Everything is streamlined, including turn order and income, to the point where I really dug it. So that is me, Tierra from Aldebaran Games, soon to be re-released with a newer, hopefully better version. You can check that out on Kickstarter if you are so inclined. But I'm not uh, <laughs> urging you to because this is not a preview. I'm just giving you the information. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.